Autonomy is an interest area to the Navy and the Department of Defense at large is not new. Now we're stepping into a new realm, very similar to where the automotive industry is going with automated cars, to where instead of just a cruise control, you now have adaptive cruise control, or you have collision avoidance technologies incorporated into the platform, which allow increasingly sophisticated machine-operated functions. Automated Velocity Obstacle Collision Avoidance. Uh, it's a 2D collision avoidance approach um, using uh, velocity obstacles, which in short are geometric shapes and velocity space that tell us when we're going to run into something or not. Uh, it's based on all the other uh, agents or robots or unmanned systems or however you want to think of them that are in the area that we're aware of. We make this geometric shape for each one of them and that tells us where to go to not hit them. TurtleBots are really amazing, commercially available, off-the-shelf product. This product comes with a suite of sensors, including but not limited to a Kinect sensor, IMU, gyroscope, odometry sensors on its wheels, and basically it drives like a car. On top of the TurtleBot, you have a laptop that's really the brains of the TurtleBot. And one of the key points about the TurtleBot is that it thinks for itself. All the turtle bots that you see are their own autonomous agents. They are all intelligent. They all know what's going on. And they do the calculations, they do the processing, but they figure out what velocities will result in no collision. They use their Kinect sensor to get depth information about the walls and surroundings of the room that they're in. And so when they use the Kinect to see how far a wall is, they then try to figure out where they are in the map. They go, I see this, this certain shape I must be at this point in the room. And this was code that was just on board the TurtleBot when we got them. But we've been able to leverage that in order to really propel our algorithm and concentrate on collision avoidance. You merely need to tell them where to go and all of the disturbances they encounter, the other crafts they encounter, they figure that on their own. So there's only so much we can do with autonomous agents in our lab space just because of the confines of the area. But by introducing a virtual environment, we can really expand the kind of scenarios that we can implement for a test and prototyping of autonomous systems. We're leveraging the Unity 3D engine as a platform for visualizing and simulating autonomous agents in virtual worlds. This will allow us to both track and visualize the robots we use in lab, as well as simulate virtual agents in virtual environments. Our system integrates the actions and communications of both real robots and virtual constructive agents, allowing both real and virtual agents to operate and interact with each other in the same environment. The Robot Operating System, or ROS as it's known for short, is a framework for messaging between agents. And this is an off-the-shelf um, open source tool that we're able to leverage really quickly and easily. And what ROS allows us to do is really quickly implement agent architectures where we can have robots and other distributed agents communicating with each other, sending data back and forth to each other, allowing for a, a really intuitive interaction system which allows us to test algorithms like collision avoidance. To get our algorithms into three-dimensional space, we're utilizing commercially available quad rotors. We want to be able to have the quad rotors communicate with the turtle bots and any other vehicles, all in one large Ross environment. We need to be able to overcome disturbances such as wind or any sort of noise. We need to be able to keep a quad rotor in the air. And to help overcome this, we've been using a new state-of-the-art L1 adaptive controller, which is able to very quickly adapt to changes in its environment to keep the quad rotor level. So the quad rotor has a model of what it thinks it looks like, how much it weighs, and, and the way it moves. When, when something disturbs it, such as a, a swinging weight underneath it, the L1 adaptive controller is able to compensate for. The resulting flight, however, is steady without operator input. The pilot barely notices any difference. If you or I were to try this with a typical RC quad, it would become very difficult to fly and likely result in a crash. Okay, we think about our Navy missions. 
Uh, we're talking, for example, uh, ISR, that's Intelligent uh, Search and Reconnaissance. Uh, that implies that you have a navigation system, means of localizing yourself within an environment. Uh, outside, you have GPS, but in an indoor facility, like a, a lab, you don't have that capability. So by us acquiring the mocap, is going to let us offload that functionality to the mocap. So now we can concentrate on uh, you know, focusing on developing our own algorithms, you know, so instead of uh, developing an entire system, now we can have a modular approach to the research of, you know, autonomy. Well, the video segments that you've seen represent different functionalities that enable diverse domains to be integrated into a common framework to support the research and development and understanding of autonomy. So, for example, we would be able to, within this context, support collaborative mission understanding with limited resources, limited manpower, and limited communication.